So for our next reaction, we'll look at bromination. Well, if hydrobromination was adding a hydrogen and a bromine across the double bond, bromination is just adding two bromines. So there we are, react the alkene up with Br2, and you make the dibromoalkane. Could do the same thing for Cl2. Now, the mechanism of this is kind of fun. I'm going to do a baby one, an introductory simple one, and then we will have an extension video available right after this for the more interesting one. But starting off nice and easy, there is ethene, just four hydrogens, and that's the carbon-carbon double bond. Again, I'm drawing at it flat so we can see what happens when the Br2 molecule comes up. Now, of course, Br2 is a non-polar molecule. So you're saying, well, how on earth are we going to get that slightly positive, slightly negative? Well, it's an induced dipole. As this bromine molecule comes up to this uh, big cloud of electron density, that cloud of electron density repels the electrons on this bromine here. So the left-hand bromine becomes slightly positive and the right-hand one becomes slightly negative. Now we can do what we did with the um, HBr. We've got the slightly positive here. The pi cloud electrons get attracted to that, thus wanting to make a bond here. And of course, as this bond is being made with this bromine, this bromine can then tell the other bromine to get lost heterolytic cleavage of the bond, taking its electrons with it, making a bromide anion. Nothing weird so far, right? What is different though, is that the bromine has got a lone pair of electrons. Well, as this bond is breaking, this pi bond is breaking, one of the carbons gets the bond to the bromine, but the other carbon would, of course, be slightly positive and then turning into a completely positive carbocation. Well, what likes positives? Ele electrons. The electrons in this lone pair will then come in and make an extra bond with that slightly positive carbon. So the net result is this fascinating bromonium ion plus the very boring bromide anion. Let's be sure we see where this has come from. Okay, We started off with the pi cloud. The electrons in the pi cloud get attracted to the slightly positive bromine and make a bond. That's this bond here. That bromine therefore tells the other bromine to get lost. That's this bromide there. And now what's new is that the bromine lone pair comes in and makes a bond with the other carbon. So the bromine bonds to both carbons. This one here, the way I've written it, using the electrons from the pi cloud, this one here using the lone pair of electrons. Now, of course, this intermediate, this intermediate bromonium ion, positives on the bromine a little bit, but there's also a slightly positive charge on the carbon and a slightly positive charge on the carbon. And of course, they are waiting for the other bromine, which is now a bromide anion, to come in and attack. But what's new about this compared to our last discussions was if you think back to the original carbocation, the bromide could attack from the top or it could attack from the bottom. Here, the bromide can't come in from the top because there's this old buddy sitting there. So it has to come in and attack from the bottom. Okay, so this is what's called an anti-attack. The first bromine went on on one side of the molecule and that's the top. The other bromine comes in on the opposite side, in this case, the bottom. They can't come on from the same side. They can't come on from whatever side they want. The first one's filling up that side. So the second one has to come in on the opposite side with this anti-attack. Okay, now when it comes in for that anti-attack, Let's say it comes into this carbon here. Well, that carbon then says to bromine, yeah, you can have your electrons, not interested in this nasty triangle anymore. I've got a real bond with my electrons from this bromide. And we make this molecule here, okay? It's the anti-confirmation and it is stereo specifically the anti-confirmation. That stereo specific says that it very specifically attacks in the anti direction. Okay, it's not regio specific. It's not saying which carbon gets attacked. It's stereo specific. It's saying what side gets attacked. Okay, so bromination, a fun one, 
goes through the bromonium ion makes your dibromoalkane, but it's in this anti-conformation, anti-attack, making the anti-conformation. Now, this gets really fun when you have an asymmetric alkene. Discussion of the asymmetric alkenes, in other words, where it's not as simple as the two hydrogens here, is beyond the WJEC specifications. But because it follows so nicely on for this, I'm immediately going into that extension movie. Those who don't want to see the extension movie, skip it and go straight into the hydrogenation.